Hey y'all, thanks for clicking on this episode of The Min Effect, and this is my eighth episode of this podcast I recently started. So before we get to the episode, this is my biggest episode I've done so far. I've worked on it for a couple months, preparing for it, editing it, uh, recording it, everything. And if you could real quick hit the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm, as well as if you like the like the content and would like more of The Min Effect, please hit the subscribe button as well as the uh, notification bell next to it so you can noti be notified anytime a new episode is out. And enjoy the video. Welcome to episode eight of the Min Effect, where I talk about sports and just about everything else I feel like. And uh, today I'm going to be cover doing something that a lot of people do, which is a mock draft. You take all the 32 picks in the first round and decide which players are going to be picked where. Now, um, I'm going to do one now, which is February right now. And then I'm going to do one after the combine later and after free agency, because you can kind of see where players are going to go more. You can really tell right now about what players are going to be going in the first round, but sometimes like the order sometimes changes after the combine, after people take, after teams take other people in free agency, and it kind of changes the little things. But if it, if the draft were to happen right now, I chose how I think it, this would have played out. And um, some of these picks are kind of weird, and it's like the team doesn't really need it, but that's how it goes every year um, in the first round. You can't, it's not all predictable. And uh, some of these picks are pretty predictable, but play teams trade into the first round and it, I kind of made it a little bit more fun than a lot of people. So, um, let's get to it. So first off the Bengals are on the clock and the Bengals, they really need about everything except wide receivers. They're kind of good on wide receivers and they're running back. But, but aside from that, they need everything. So, and when you, when you go into a rebuilding phase, your first thing you want to start out with is a quarterback. You need to have, make sure you have a quarterback. And Andy Dalton is not their quarterback of the future. So they take Joe Burrow, quarterback from LSU. Now, this is, pretty, this is I don't think even the, uh, the combine or nothing will change this. This is pretty given because uh, Joe Burrow this is said to be the best college football quarterback to ever live he has the he won the Heisman Trophy last year he won the the championship last year um and really it's like I can't see them not taking him and the 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 question is though what they're going to do with Andy Dalton because they're paying him a lot of money and they're they'll probably make a trade with some other team hopefully and maybe pick up another pick and uh so that's that's what I think is going to be given. And then the Washington Redskins are on the clock after that. And they the Washington Redskins need just about everything also. Like the Bengals, that's why they did so bad. And then uh, so the Washington Redskins take the best prospect in the entire draft. Chase Young, defensive end from Ohio. Ohio always has these like pass rushers. Ohio is so good on defense every year. I don't understand. Because college football, it changes a lot. New players a lot every year. I don't know. They, but... This is not a very good pass rushing class. Last year was a great pass rushing class for the draft. This year, it's not that great. Aside from Chase Young and a couple other players, it's not that great. But to land Chase Young is amazing. He's one of the best pass rushing pass rushers to come out of college ever. And uh, Ron Rivera fell into a perfect situation here. I was watching Callan Cowherd, and, and he said uh, Ron Rivera it was not a good idea to go into uh, the the Washington Redskins because he got dropped by the Panthers and then went into the Washington Redskins and he was saying it was kind of a dysfunctional franchise or whatever, but it's really not like the, he's in such a good situation right now. Um, they don't really, you don't really know what they're going to do at quarterback though. That's the one thing they, they could trade for Andy Dalton, but they're, they're paying two quarterbacks already. But, um, he fell into a great scenario because easy chase young. The thing is they don't have a second round pick, but really it's like with Terry McLaurin on the rise, you can easily get a second string wide receiver, uh, in the third round and then get some offensive line help in this. He fell into a great situation in the Washington Redskins, way better than the Carolina Panthers, in my opinion. And I like this. So, um, Next up, the Detroit Lions are on the clock after having a horrible season, and the Detroit Lions need someone on defense. So it's kind of, it, it's so this is where we could see a trade, and uh, I think most teams will try to trade up to the Giants at four. However, the Miami Dolphins will offer a trade for the the Detroit Lions that they can't miss on. The Dolphins trade up to three from five, giving their fifth overall pick and their 26th overall pick because the Dolphins have a lot of picks in the first round and in all the other rounds. They, I don't see the Lions trading down more than like five because uh, they need someone on defense and they need more players. So this is a pick that a trade the dolphin the lions can't miss on and the dolphins trade up and take their quarterback of the future who will sit behind ryan fitzpatrick next season and they'll build around him for the future uh to a tag of aloha quarterback from alabama 
probably said his last name wrong, but I don't care. And then uh, this is a great spot for Tua to go. I mean, he's a Hawaiian guy. He's going back to another tropical area in Miami. They're, they are, they're in a huge rebuilding phase this season. I mean, this draft, next draft, and then that's all they really need to be able to win their division because it looks like the Patriots are in the decline. Uh, so, yeah, two off seasons, and I think the Dolphins will be back in it and uh, competing with Tua as their quarterback. They started the whole tank for Tua thingy last year, and uh, like the Dolphins were the first to do that, like wiping their wiping their slate so they can really tank and try to get Tua because everyone thought Tua was going to be the number one pick, and then he had that injury, and now it's looking like he was going to fall. However, at the Combine, I think Tua will look a lot more healthy and look uh, like a promising quarterback for the future that the Dolphins will not be able to miss on next up the Giants are on the clock and this is where we could see the Giants need someone to like protect Daniel Jones because Daniel Jones had so many turnovers he's and they need someone to protect him and they need someone on offense but I think they're going to do it in the second round because right now they also need someone that can get to the quarterback and it's not a very great pass rushing class they need people on defense all over the defense because David Gettleman took two corners last year last uh draft in the first and the sixth round that I think they're going to play through this season so I don't think they're going to take Jeffrey Okuda instead they go with Isaiah Simmons linebacker from Clemson this is kind of a not their biggest need because they can get a linebacker in the second round. But Isaiah Simmons is just like a safe pick. Last year they went kind of like heavy on their picks and it was kind of not risky. The, Isaiah Simmons is such a safe pick. He's going to be a great linebacker in this league. You can blitz him off the edge. You can play him on the line. You can drop him into coverage. You can do so many things with Isaiah Simmons that I think David Gittleman would love. And their defense are going to start looking great next year, I think, with if they can solidify the safety position in the third round, maybe, and some other things the Giants will need. They need people on offense, though. That's the thing. They need to give Daniel Jones protection. Their wide receivers look okay, and Saquon Barkley looks amazing. So they have playmakers. They need people on the offensive line. That's what they need. So the Giants could trade down here, but I don't think anyone's going to trade up for Justin Herbert. I just don't see it happening. I've Like a lot of people say, like, the quarterback is such, well it is such a huge position but to trade up to for Justin Herbert at four is kind of I don't like that so I think the Giants aren't going to get a trade that they like and they're just going to take uh, Isaiah Simmons. Lions are back on the clock after the trade with the Miami Dolphins where they took to a, and now the Dolphin the Lions are back in the clock and they're just they're so happy because they're taking the player they would have took at three anyways Jeffrey Akuda, cornerback from Ohio like I said, Ohio, their defense every year is so good. And Jeffrey Okuda is a different breed. That's his nickname. And this man, it's going to be annoying because like, I'm, a, I'm a Vikings fan. And to play against Jeffrey Okuda, having him go against Adam Thielen, he's going to go against Devontae Adams. Jeffrey Okuda is going to be one of the best corners in the league. Well, it looks to be like that. Sometimes players are huge busts. But... um. I just don't see it happening because the Lions need someone on their defense and there's nothing more important than the cornerback role. And the Lions are going to go with that and it's going to be rough. And the Detroit Lions, though, knowing that they're a cursed franchise, they honestly, they deserve it. They've never been to the Super Bowl. They deserve at least someone to be a superstar aside from Kelvin Johnson and Barry Sanders. Chargers are on the clock and the Chargers are... Chargers don't they're sitting so calm at six because the Chargers know that they're going to take an offensive tackle and there's going to be an offensive tackle available even if the Giants took someone there'd be someone available and they're just calm chilling at six and they take the top offensive tackle in the draft Jedrick Wills Jr. offensive tackle from Alabama Chargers need this so much if it if it wasn't for their offensive line they would have been a great offense this year Philip Rivers looked so bad was because he had no protection he'd throw the 50 50 balls gets take sacks he just had a lot of bad decisions because he had no protection. He had playmakers, but no protection. So they're going to take a – this is where we could see Justin Herbert though go, but I feel like the Chargers are going to take a quarterback in free agency. They're a win-now team. They need to sell out seats, and they're going to give him protection once they take a quarterback in free agency. Maybe Tom Brady, maybe Teddy Bridgewater. We don't know yet. The Carolina Panthers are on the clock, and every year in this top 10, there's something so – unexpected that happens and I feel like it's going to be the Carolina Panthers this year I mean if it were up to me I'd take a pass rusher here but I don't know they, they, I feel like the Carolina Panthers are going to go with the top prospect which is going to be Jerry Judy wide receiver from from Alabama yeah um Jerry Judy is is a can't miss wide receiver and I know they have so many good wide receivers I mean Curtis Samuel uh there's that one guy 
I'm so bad at I've, I'm good at remembering names when I'm not recording a podcast, but then I'm put on the spot and I can't remember his name. But um, their wide receiver position, they're doing great, and and uh, the quarterback. This is where also we could see Justin Herbert go, but I feel like it's not going to happen because they're in such a yeah. I just can't see it happening. Jerry Judy is a can't miss wide receiver, and to put more playmakers on that offense, even though they have a lot already, is a very Carolina Panthers thing to do. They do weird things sometimes. And I feel like this is a this is a, this is a good pick. Not as weird as Daniel Jones getting picked fifth overall last year. But there's going to be something weird that happens in this top 10 that nobody expects. The uh, Arizona Cardinals are on the clock. And the Arizona Cardinals, they're also sitting just calm at 9. or No, no, at 8, waiting for an offensive tackle to fall to them and just be available. Because there, there's some offensive tackles that are gonna go a lot of offensive tackles go in the first round that are easily first round picks viable and the Carolina Panthers need to give Kyler Murray protection and uh I'd be surprised if they take anything else even if someone great is available I think the Carolina Panthers need to build around Kyler Murray he's their quarterback of the future first overall pick last year and they need to give him protection weapons everything and I think that's what they're going to focus on this this uh off season and then probably add some pieces on defense on the secondary the Andrew Thomas offensive tackle from Georgia uh, he said to be the best uh offensive tackle in the league I feel like he's still gonna not get picked Jed as over Jedrick Wills I feel like Andrew Thomas just fits so well with the Cardinals and Jedrick Wills just fits so well with the Chargers that I feel like that's just gonna happen and uh Andrew Thomas protecting uh Kyler Murray just fits and then Jedrick Wills protecting whoever they take in free agency some older player just fits and I think this is how it's good these two are going to be picked so that's wrapping out the top eight and then next up go to the next eight the jaguars are on the clock and the jaguars they need a lot of things they're in a really weird quarterback situation so this is also where we could see justin herbert go but i don't think it's going to happen because they're nick Foles, gardner Minshew. i don't think they're going to add another person to be playing for the starting job so i think the jaguars go defense and they take the top defensive player available Derek Brown, defensive tackle from Auburn. Uh, Derek Brown is great against the rush. That's what they've been bad at. He's great against the pa – he can rush the passer. Um, I think this is a great pick, at especially at nine. I mean, Derek Brown could go in top five even, and to get him at nine is such a viable pick. And, yeah, I think Jaguars are really going to go defense. I think they need to improve their defense if they want to compete because I don't think they're very – confident on offense and I think they're going to go defense a lot in this draft and this offseason and it's going to look like the Jaguar team we saw a few years ago where they had a great defense no offense and it's going to look something like that again I feel like Browns are on the clock and they're this is 10th pick and uh, Browns also need to give their uh Baker Mayfield some offensive line help because he has had no help he's also been making a lot of bad decisions they're they need to go offense if they want to do anything because I feel like, I feel like their defense is just, they've 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 put too much into their offense to give up on it. I mean they've traded for Beckham, they've traded for a lot of other players, and their their uh running back group is looking great. The Baker Mayfield is still as promised. I feel like next season he's kind of just going to go off. I think this off season Baker Mayfield is going to realize that he needs to just go ham for next season because he did not prepare for last season at all he thought he was just going to do well and it just it was doing commercials and that i feel like he's going to train do what lamar jackson did and just train and they come back strong next season and uh they have to give him some help so i think they go tristan Wirfs, offensive tackle from iowa this is a great pick at 10 another offensive tackle this is such a viable position probably the second biggest position or second biggest with like wide receiver and a couple other things to just give your quarterback some protection and some playmakers and he has playmakers already and then now just giving him protection so he can actually have time to throw because he made a lot of bad decisions under pressure and this is a great pick for the Browns uh New York Jets are on the clock and the New York Jets are this is a steal at 11 I mean CD Lamb wide receiver from Oklahoma they've turned in the card instantly when this comes up because they need someone offense. I don't think Robbie Anderson is coming back, but they need someone for Sam Darnold. I mean, he has no protection, no playmakers. They need to build around Sam Darnold. He, I think he's the second best quarterback to come out of that draft class in 2018 after Lamar Jackson. And they need they need to give him some help. They have some they have people on defense and they focus on defense too much, but they need to focus on offense and to get CD Lamb uh one of the best wide receivers to ever come out of college. I mean, well, 
I don't care. I don't know about that. But uh, this wide receiver class is so good that they need to get wide receivers in it. This may be one of the best wide receiver classes to ever come out of college. And to take CD Lamb at 11, usually CD Lamb would have gone earlier, but I feel like a lot of these other picks are going to, like, there's other p positions they can focus on and take wide receivers in the second round. Like last season, you saw AJ Brown, Terry McLaurin, and DK Metcalf. The best wide receivers weren't even picked in the first round and did better than the, than the wide receivers picked in the first round. But none of those wide receivers were CD Lamb, obviously. So to get CD Lamb in the first round is great. And I feel like a lot of the last season had a big impact on what's going to happen this uh, this draft where teams wait till the second round, the third round to take wide receivers and they can become wide receiver ones. And that's what I think a lot of teams are going to do. The Raiders are on the clock and to, they instantly take Justin Herbert, quarterback from Oregon. I mean, no one thinks Justin Herbert's going to fall this far, but I think it will happen because some of these other teams like are going to take quarterbacks and free agency or there's just other positions they need to improve on also and to take Justin Herbert is just such a weird pick in the top five I feel like or even the top 10 I, don't, I just don't like it but to take Justin Herbert at 12 uh, going to a John Gruden offense where John Gruden could probably trade Derek Carr I don't think they like each other anymore it's kind of weird because Derek Carr went there they were neighbors or whatever and then all of a sudden there's some conflict and then uh even if justin herbert sits a couple seasons i feel like this is a perfect team for him to be on with, with john gruden one of the greatest quarterbacks coach to ever live and this is just a great spot for justin herbert to be at so now the indianapolis colts are on the clock and there hasn't been very many trades this is where we could see a trade the indianapolis colts love to trade down I've only had one trade so far because a lot of these teams are just sitting calm where they are and they don't need to trade. So this is where the Colts could trade down, but I don't see any teams trading up, like the, any, any teams giving a good enough offer to the Colts to trade up here. So I think the Colts just take, take what players available, the top prospect. And in this case, it would be Javon Kinlaw, defensive tackle from South Carolina. The Colts need help on their defensive line. And this is not a great pass rushing class, but Javon Kinlaw has a lot of promise and it, He's great off the snap. He's so explosive. He can get to the run, get to the quarterback, and he's easily a top 20 pick. And in this case, I have him going at 13. But this could not, this might not happen too, because you can get a defensive tackle in the second round too. I mean, defensive tackle is not a huge position. When you have like Derek Brown, I mean, the Jaguars took Derek Brown at nine. Derek Brown's insane. Javon Kinlaw is like, he could even go to late first round, but I think. If he's available here, the Colts are not like won't get a good enough trade to trade down, and we'll take Javon Kinlaw. Oh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on the clock now. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you don't know what's going to happen with with um, Jameis Winston yet. I think they're going to take Teddy Bridgewater instead and get Jameis Winston out of there, not paying him a more accurate passer. And Teddy Bridgewater. Well, you don't know who the quarterback's going to be, but whoever the quarterback is going to be, you need to give them help because there's not much help. They have a lot of playmakers on offense, like like what I said about the Browns and some of these other teams. They have playmakers. They just don't have protection. So they, the Buccaneers take offensive tackle Mekhi Becton from Louisiana, or no, Louisville. And this is a great pick. I mean, you need offensive line help here uh, with your depth at wide receiver position, even running back like you – and and whoever they whatever quarterback they take they need to go offense here they could go defense too i guess if they're getting a pass rusher if javon kenlow's here they could take him i just think they're going to go offensive tackle here if makai beckton is still on the clock or on the board and then now the the broncos are on the clock and broncos need help in their secondary they have a lot they have some pass rushing help already but i think they go secondary here because Christian Fulton is on the clock. So they take Christian Fulton, cornerback from LSU. And we saw him play so well in the championship game. And the Broncos, they do need help at corner. They need help in all around their secondary. So I'd be surprised if they don't take Christian Fulton if he's on the clock. So I think they instantly take Christian Fulton. Now the Atlanta Falcons are on the clock. Atlanta Falcons are another team. Like, they need so much pieces. Like, it's so... like. A lot of these teams, it's good for them because they can just take whoever's available on the clock, whoever's the top player. So in this case, the Falcons take someone who can get to the quarterback. This is not a very great edge rushing class, but between these two players, it's great. So AJ Epinesa, defensive end from Iowa. This is a steal at 16, actually. He's probably going to go earlier than this. And that's something Atlanta Falcons have been not very great against their edge rushers. They've taken a lot of edge rushers 
in the past in the first round. These these are edge rushers they've taken in the first round, but I just don't see them sticking with them. I feel like they just need this is a position you just need to keep throwing draft capital at until you hit. I mean, Vic Beasley looks promising, but Vic Beasley teaming up with AJ Epinesa is a lot better than Tack McKinney. And I just feel like this is this is a has to happen again, even even though they keep throwing draft capital at it. It's just like you have to hit on the edge rushers so you can get to the quarterback. It's such a viable position. Now the Dallas Cowboys are on the clock and they're sitting pretty at 17. I mean, Dallas Cowboys, they, they're sitting at 17 waiting for whatever player in the secondary is going to be available there. I mean, there's a lot. Of, this is a huge cornerback class, cornerback class and, and safety class. So the Cowboys don't need to go anywhere. So they go with safety Xavier McKinney from Alabama. This is a great pick. I mean, they need someone who can tackle jerry jones loves his safe picks he always like he'll take some offensive guard he doesn't go a lot of risk in his picks he just takes the most safe picks and xavier many mckinney's a safe pick and will be a great safety in the future and i just can't see them passing on him so now the dolphins are back on the clock and the dolphins have this pick from their minka fitzpatrick trade uh with the steelers so this would be originally be the steelers pit trade um and the Dolphins obviously took Tua Tagovailoa in their first pick. When you're rebuilding a team, you need to give a quarterback and build around the quarterback protection, playmakers, and that's the Dolphins need everything. I mean, they have a wide receiver, a couple wide receivers, and that's about it. So they have some playmakers. So now they go offensive line help and take Josh Jones, offensive tackle from Houston. And Josh Jones is very athletic and I think would pair great with uh, Tua Tagovailoa and give them some protection. I think they're going to go all offense this draft, maybe take a def defensive player. They need just about everything. I mean, the Dolphins are in a great situation to just take whoever's available uh, and then probably take corner next round. I'd, I'd say take a corner in the second round because this is a great corner class. Now the Raiders are back on the clock. The Raiders, just like the Dolphins, took a quarterback. Raiders took Justin Herbert in my mock draft. And then the Raiders are on the clock from the Khalil Mack trade. So this would originally be the Bears trade. And... uh same situation as the Dolphins. Dolphins took protection for their quarterback. I think Raiders go weapons for their quarterback and take T. Higgins, wide receiver from Clemson. This is, a, this is an amazing pick. I mean, T. Higgins is a deep threat, and that's what Justin Herbert would need. So now the Jaguars are on the clock. This is three times in a row a traded pick. Jaguars are back on the clock after taking Derek Brown the first time at nine, which was steal. This is from the Jalen Ramsey trade with the Rams. This was originally be the Rams pick. And then I think to pair with Derek Brown, they're going to also go defense again, but this time go into the secondary and take C.J. Henderson, quarterback from Florida. Now, it's this is saying it's pretty obvious who the first two uh, corners in this draft class are, but taking that third one is hard, and I think C.J. Henderson will do great in the combine and will be a viable pick for any team and who's going to pick the third, who's going to take the third corner off the clock and this in this case it's going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars who take CJ Henderson to fill in for where Jalen Ramsey was playing now the Eagles are on the clock the Philadelphia Eagles man they're on the clock and Eagles also need help on their secondary Eagles are but this is a great corner great safety class and I don't oh it's also a great wide receiver class they, those are like the three core positions and so the, out of those they take whoever's the top one available uh, in this case, it would be Henry Ruggs, wide receiver from Alabama. This gives Carson Wentz another weapon to use with because uh, Deshaun Jackson is not looking that great anymore. And Alshon Jeffries isn't looking as great as he used to be. So giving a new weapon, just kind of refreshing the offense, uh, the offensive playmakers, and then also improving on the secondary is what the Eagles need. And that's they're so close from being a great team again, but it's like, it's it's probably going to fall off if Carson Wentz can't perform next season with Henry Ruggs, if they were to take Henry Ruggs. And then now the Buffalo Bills are on the clock. This is a weird spot. The Buffalo Bills need someone, some playmakers in the offense, and this is where we could see a wide receiver go and the, where we could see a running back go. and where we I don't know about running backs in the first round, but in the second round, probably a running back. Uh, but I... I feel like the Bills are going to really try to take some older players and probably take like a Robbie Anderson or some wide receivers in the free agency as soon as free agency kicks off because they need to give Josh Allen some more weapons on offense. And in this case, I think they're going to go defense. And it's kind of weird because their defense is great. Their secondary is great, but giving putting some pressure on this on the quarterback will make their secondary look even better. So they go Eater 
Gross Matos, defensive end from Penn State. I probably said that wrong, but I don't really care. Uh, this is a player that needs to perform in the combine to get a pick in the first round because he looked great last season in, in college and then just kind of fell off as the season was going. And if he looks great in the combine, I think the Bills will easily take him here to put pressure on the cornerback so then their defense can even be better. And then probably in free agency, give Josh Allen some more weapons to work with because that's who, that's what they need the most. The Bills could trade up with Colts, but I don't know if the Colts would drop down that low. Um, and then now the New England Patriots are on the clock. Now, this is such a Bill Belichick trade, the Bill Belichick pick. I mean, he could trade out of this and try to take a quarterback if they don't have Tom Brady. But assuming they were, Tom Brady is staying, they're going to take Grant Delpit, safety from LSU. Now, Grant Delpit, he's a very smart player. He just has a lot of holes. I mean, he can't tackle very well. He can't move around very well. Grant Delpit is a player Bill Belichick can take and just improve and improve and improve. We've seen Bill Belichick do this with a lot of defensive players where he just takes a nobody and turns them into a superstar. And I think Grant Delpit, just if you fix a few things on him, can be a, the best safety in the league easily because he's a smart player. And I think he wants to be a, the best safety. So I think Bill Belichick will easily take on him. This is a Bill Belichick guy right here. And this is a Bill Belichick pick right here. And I think if Grant Delpit is available, that Bill Belichick will take him. Now the new the New Orleans Saints are on the clock. The Saints are the Saints are sitting nice at twenty four. I mean they have so the Saints have like no holes. Their only thing is is their their uh, wide receivers. I mean they're not going to take a corner. They're good on corners. They're gonna they're good on like everything except wide receivers. And this is a great wide receiver class. So you can hit in the second and third round, but at twenty four, I'd probably just go with the first round and take whoever is available. And in this place, in this case, it's Lavisca Chenault Jr., wide receiver from Colorado. This is actually a great pick. I mean, he can team up so well with Michael Thomas with, and Alvin Kamara. You can throw him inside the slot. You can the, giving as so many playmakers. If Drew Brees comes back or Teddy Bridgewater, whoever is their quarterback next year, just giving him all the weapons on offense because they looked great on defense last season. And I don't know if they're going to go defense this late in the draft, unless if it's maybe no, they don't need linebackers. I don't know. I, I feel like a wide receiver is a great pick at 24 and LaVisca Chenault Jr. is a great pick at 24. So I couldn't see them passing. Now the Minnesota Vikings are on the clock. This is wrapping up the final eight picks of the draft. And the Minnesota Vikings, my Minnesota Vikings, are sitting nice at 25. But they're they're in a weird situation here because they don't want Trayvon Diggs to be available at this pick because they don't want Trayvon Diggs. I feel like you just don't want to... Mike Zimmers and Rick Spielman are just not the type of people to take a brother of another player and just bring it into your... A brother of a player that's on your team, Stefan Diggs, and put him in the same... Thing, especially because Stefan Diggs made it obvious that he'd rather play somewhere else. It's not that he would hate to play there. He said he would rather play someone, somewhere else. So the Minnesota Vikings are sitting calm at, at 25, and I think they have to go defensive line here because their defensive line looked horrible against the, against the run, and they need to do better there. So they take Marlon Davidson, defensive end from Auburn. Now, we don't need a defensive end. We don't, but this is such a Meg Zimmer's thing to do and take a, take Marlon Davidson. We've seen him play on the inside in college and take Marlon Davidson and move him to the inside to team up with, to be next to uh, Linval Joseph and pro they'll probably move. I feel like Mike Zimmer is going to take Everson Griffin back and move him to the inside too. And then you can have Everson Griffin and Marlon Davidson, both these defensive end players that are built huge and just move them on the inside and try to make that work because they're great against the, against the run and, this is a Mike Zimmer's thing to do, and this is Mike Zimmer's pick to do. We saw uh, Marlon Davidson go against the Gophers in the Rose Bowl, or the no, 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 the Outback Bowl, and then really just lit it up. So I think this is a steal for – no, I don't know. Because you could take a defensive tackle in the second round too, but I think this is just a Mike Zimmer's thing to do, and he's going to do it. So now the Lions are on the clock. This is from the – from the original Dolphins trade. Now the Lions have been in, they've been this team, they're one of those teams, the Lions, Browns, these Jaguars, these are the teams that have been in like a rebuild mode for like the last 10 years. And just like the Lions were so bad and took Matthew Stafford. And Matthew Stafford, if he would go anywhere else, would look so good. And I think they go quarterback here. So they take the top quarterback available, and that's Jordan Love, quarterback from Utah. And they don't need a quarterback, but if you want to do an entire rebuild, 
because a lot of these players are young and you can get so much for Matthew Stafford and trade them. You take Jordan Love and then Matthew Stafford also gets injured. So you can, so you can't have David Blau or Kyle Sluter step up and fill in for Matthew Stafford all the time. So you need to take a player that can really fill in and Jordan Love looks like a very viable starter in the future and they could take him in the second round but there's some risk because the Redskins pick right before him and they could take a quarterback too also the there's linebackers the Dolphins I mean the Lions need a linebacker really bad and this is a great linebacker class and there's going to be linebackers available in the second round for their pick and I think they're just going to wait it out and take a linebacker then and then right now take Jordan Love and probably trade Matthew Stafford if they're looking like next season is going to be bad. Even though Matthew Stafford is coming off his like best season of his career, they, he, he has a lot of trade value. He gets injured and if they want to do a full rebuild, they need to get rid of Matthew Stafford and get first next year first round picks out of it. So now the Seattle Seahawks are on the clock and Seattle Seahawks need, need a players on their secondary I mean well not safety they're good on safety but I feel like this is an easy pick for them they go with Trayvon Diggs cornerback from Alabama brother of Stefan Diggs and I feel like they mostly play him inside the slot I mean they play George Kittle twice a year so you need players in inside the slot to go against George Kittle and uh, this is a this is an easy pick for them I feel because for Trayvon Diggs to fall to 27, he's expect he's expected to be like around the mid first round because he's it's said to be the third best corner, but I feel like he's kind of going to drop a little bit after C.J. Henderson picks it up, and will probably be available for the Seattle Seahawks at 27. So they take Trayvon Diggs, and then now the Ravens are on the clock, and the Ravens need to do good against the pass. I mean, I mean. Yeah, yeah, they need to rush the passer, and there's not going to be any defensive ends available that are going to be viable for a first-round pick at this at this spot in the draft at 28. So they go with Zach Bond, elf, uh, outside linebacker from Wisconsin. They can use him in every way. I mean, they can use him, drop him into the into the pass coverage. They can rush him off the edge. They can blitz him they can use him against the rush i mean this is such a great pick for the ravens and i think they no it's such a good linebacker class to where i don't think they're going to trade up even though they really would hope for zach bond to be available here or some linebacker to be available here and there's going to be because there's a lot of linebackers so i think that's a easy pick for the ravens to do they're not going to trade or anything now the tennessee titans are on the clock and the tennessee titans they just need someone to get to the passer. And this is not a great spot for you to be if you want to get to the passer. So they could go offense here, but it's also like there's nothing that great. So I think they go with a player that has a lot of potential. However, it could be a bust. And they take Jordan Elliott, defensive tackle from Missouri, ranked the highest graded pass rusher uh, of a defensive tackle in college and has a lot of promise, but he could also be a, buff, a bust. He's great against the... Uh, off the snap he's so explosive he can get to the pull to the passer get to the run I feel like Jordan Elliott is expected to go like early or mid second round because he has some red flags however I think the Titans need this position this player so much that they use their first round pick on him and take him at 29 and then now the the Packers are on the clock and the Packers I feel like the Packers are going to go defense again because their offense looked okay. Their defense looked good for the first half, and it's a young defense. They could go wide receiver here, but it's such a good wide receiver class. They could go corner too. It's also a good corner class to where they can get these players in the second round or and third round, and I think they go with a player that would have a big impact on their, on their uh, defense, and they go with Kenneth Murray, linebacker from Oklahoma. Now, they don't need to blitz him like that. They can Kenneth Murray will mostly play into coverage, mostly block those tight ends because tight end is becoming a huge position now, and mostly block those tight ends. Now Kenneth Murray will be a be a good pick. It'll be a safe pick. He'll play. He'll be a starter for a long time, and I feel like this is a good pick. So now the 49ers are on the clock, and the 49ers is weird. Their offense, was, like their defense, was so good, but I also think 49ers are going to go defense here, and uh. You look at uh, Richard Sherman, and he he plays like a top corner in the league still, but to team him up with another corner, because corner is such a huge position, and they look good all around their defense, and uh, in their secondary, and on their defense pass rushing area, their linebackers, everything. So to have a corner, they could take a um, 
slot corner because that's also becoming a huge position with these tight ends that are growing. Um, but to take a, I think they're going to take an outside corner here and to get a corner this late in the draft because of how much a corner uh, means to a team is huge and probably will end up taking Richard Sherman's job in the future because Richard Sherman is reaching the end of his years, even though it doesn't look like it, but he is getting older and he can't play forever. So I think they go with Cameron Dantzler, cornerback from Mississippi State. And it's really hard because Cameron Dantzler and Jalen Johnson are so even, but I feel like Cameron Dantzler just fits more with this 49ers defense and will line up outside against these wide receivers that they have to go against. And this is a great pick for the 49ers. I mean, their offense... Their offense looks like it needs help, but it really doesn't. Like the players just need to play more, and it'll look it'll look a lot better. And their defense does need help at the cornerback position. So I feel like this would be a great pick at thirty-one to get such a great corner that could be a secondary, uh, a second corner out of college, and then end up taking the starting position later. So now at the at thirty-two, there hasn't been very many. I, I think I've had one trade so far because a lot of these teams are sitting so calm where they are. Like they can just let players fall to them because there's so many players that can go in this first round that I just don't see a lot of trades happening. So now the Chiefs are on the clock and the Chiefs need someone on the defense. They need to get to the passer. They need to stop the secondary even. I mean, Tyron Matthew can play so well. He can, you can throw him in the, as a slot corner, play him safety. They need players on their defense and I don't think they're going to go offense at all here. But there's a lot of players available that the defensive players that are available that it can be a viable threat to any team. And I think that we're going to see a trade here at 32. I think this is going to be weird. Carolina Panthers trade up at 32 with the, with the Kansas city chiefs, Carolina Panthers give their first and their fourth round picks. Now these are early round picks or first, no, no, no. second and fourth and fourth round picks here. These are early second and fourth round picks for the Kansas City first round pick at 32. So this is where the Chiefs can really develop on their defense. And this is where the Carolina Panthers are going to trade up and take a quarterback. They take Jake Fromm, quarterback from Georgia. Now, if this draft were to happen today, this would not happen at all because you don't know how Jake Fromm's going to perform. But in the combine, if Jake Fromm looks great, I can definitely see this happening because uh, with the with the changes that are happening with the Carolina Panthers, I have them taking the wide receiver. So he's going to have a lot of weapons and I don't see them sticking with Cam Newton. They could stick with Kyle Allen in the future, but I feel like the, with this new team, it's just going to be a lot different and they're going to make, he's going to bring in his new quarterback instead of taking what the quarterbacks were before him. And with Greg Olson leaving and then, they're in a, re a big rebuild right now, and I think when you are in a rebuild, you have to go with a quarterback, and they're not going to take a quarterback in the first round, although they could take Justin Herbert. It would be kind of weird. So they, instead, they trade into the first round. They were hoping to get Jordan Love, but the Lions already took Jordan Love, and I think the Carolina Panthers are going to go with Jake Fromm if Jake Fromm looks great in the combine. So let me know what y'all think down below. Now, this is kind of weird with the Panthers. The Panthers have some weird picks in here. And just let me know what y'all think down below in the comment section. What picks are stupid? Which ones you agree with? Now, there is some dumb stuff. What you think will happen? How this first round will play out? Because really anything can happen. And yeah, till next time.